The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 24th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. So over the past six months, this congregation has uh, seen a lot of transitions. And a lot of times when these things happen, there's anxiety and nervousness about what is to come. And all I can say to, to this feeling, and I have them too, is that God has been with us the whole way, that God is with us right now, and my understanding of Scripture is that God will be with us in the future. When uh, Chip announced that he was leaving, it left a hole in faith formation and multimedia, and uh, God was with us. And we found people to step in and, and to help out and, and hired some new staff, and, and volunteers started to pick up to, to help out in other areas, and God saw us through. We had to learn how to do ministry in some new ways, but God was with us. When we lost Gay, our hearts were broken and still are. Um, she left quite a hole as well. And, and what we did around here. But staff picked up extra duties to make ends meet. And volunteers started to come out to help us do some of the things that Gay was, was doing. And ministry kept going. We had to learn how to do it in a new way. But it was clear that God was with us. And looking back, uh, Richard Ward says, The only way you can see God's action is by turning around, looking backwards. You'll see the straight line of God in your life. And looking back, I can see how God was with us each and every time along the way. And now we found out that Sue is going to be leaving our business office, and that is, uh, uh, that leaves another hole, and we'll have to figure out how we're going to do uh, ministry in a new way, but I know without a doubt that God is with us as we make decisions, as we, as we learn, as we discern, as we figure out what is the next step that God is asking of us. My spiritual advisor always tells me that when I met with adversity, Transitions, anxiety, nervousness, all these things, even fear. He tells me that that's when God is preparing me for something. And I don't like it when he tells me that, honestly. <laughs> because I would rather be comfortable, right? Uh, I don't want to, to feel those things. I just want things to be okay. But he says, no, God is preparing me for something. And I can't help but think that God is preparing this congregation for something. I, I don't know exactly what that is. But I know that we are with the divine in that preparation and that God is moving in and through us, inviting us to do ministry in a new way, that God is with us and God is preparing us. Preparing is an interesting dynamic. Isaiah talks about preparing. And uh, 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 Scott gave a little bit of a background. Oh, yeah. Scott gave a little bit of a background about uh, uh, Isaiah. It was written in the 8th century. And it was written to a group of people that were experiencing devastation. The Assyrian Empire had come and destroyed and, de and demolished and, 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 and dispersed the people in the north. And Isaiah is writing to some of those people that have been dispersed, but also to those people that, that didn't know what to do when, when Judah was being attacked by, by Assyria um, uh, and Israel. They didn't know what to do. So Isaiah is writing to them to prepare for when the time comes that we are called back. And not only you, the people that were dispersed, but everyone, everyone to be called back to Jerusalem. And when that time comes, we need to be prepared, which means God is going to call us to new things. And he talks about all these reversals. One of the things is turning our swords into plowshares. Now, a sword is the weapon for war, and a plowshare is something to make a, a harvest, to give life sustenance. So imagine beating that sword down, the energy that it would take 
to hammer down that sharp edge, to flatten it out, to form that plow. It would take a lot of energy, a lot of effort, a lot of time. And Isaiah is asking the people to practice just this way, to prepare just this way. So that way we are turning from warfare into peace, from danger to security, from dispersion to togetherness. He even says pretty much the whole letter of Isaiah that he's writing is saying, and if all these nations are going to come to us so they can learn about God, we better act like we know God. So be prepared. And that's when he says, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Be prepared. I asked the kids how they prepare for Christmas. And, and I, I got to say, I love my family when we prepare for Christmas because Thanksgiving Day ends and it's like the next day or two, all of a sudden, <laughs> Christmas! And it's just like the, the house is done and we're, we're done. And we get it done in the morning or an afternoon and it's all beautiful. But one of my favorite parts is the tree when we put the tree up. And, and every year, it seems to be the same pattern. Becca will sit on the floor and start handing out ornaments. But she's doing this because when they got put away, they didn't get put away very nicely. So she's really untangling all the ornaments for us. And so the three of us are up there, and we're putting ornaments on the tree. And when we started doing this years ago, I was always doing the top. Eli was doing the middle, and Sam was doing the bottom. But now they're all tall, and so we're just going all over the place. And I find myself totally consumed with, let's make sure we balance it out. When I know at the end of it all, it's covered in ornaments. It's like a cornucopia of ornaments of past, present, and potentially even future, and it's beautiful. Christmas music is playing, the lights are on, and we're, we're prepared for that day, at least in decorations right now. But as I'm doing that with them, I'm remembering my childhood holding up the ornament that I made when I was four, looking at Sam put his ornament that he made here at the day school, and I'm taken back to the time when I was a child, doing the same thing with my family, preparing for Christmas. And I can hear my dad's Andy Williams Christmas album on the record player. You probably know the one, some of y'all, yes. And my mom baking <laughs> cookies. My grandfather would play his violin in the living room, and my grandmother would play her piano. And it's like I'm transported back to that time, because I look at my kids as they're putting these ornaments up, and I see I see my grandparents, I see my family, I see my parents in their faces, in their eyes. It's as if they are with me in that moment. God is with us in this way. We are transported back to the time of Isaiah where God was with those people as we prepare our hearts and minds for what is to come. The gospel today. It's a pretty powerful gospel because it's not necessarily about preparing to meet the Christ child at the manger, is it? They are talking about when the time comes that the Son of Man will return. And Jesus is very clear when he's speaking to his disciples saying that the angels don't know when this is going to happen. Jesus himself does not know when this is going to happen. Only God knows. And then he does this comparison to Noah, which is really, really profound. We all know who Noah was. He built the ark. He got the animals on board. Probably took more than a day to do, right? He had to prepare. And he built this thing. And he collected the animals. And he listened to what God was speaking to him. And his family got on board, and the rains fell, and the waters came up, and he and his family were with God on this ark. There were some people that never prepared, didn't know, had no clue what was going on, were living in a different way, and the waters came, and they were engulfed in it. And so Jesus is speaking to the people and to the disciples today, saying, don't be like those people that were swallowed up in the waters of the flood that had no idea. Be prepared. Stay alert. Be awake. We don't know when this time will come. So be prepared for the Son of Man. How in the world are we supposed to pre prepare for the Son of Man to come? It's easy to prepare for Christmas. We've got patterns for those things. It's easy to even prepare for what next season of the church is going to be. But to prepare ourselves for Christ to come, for the Son of Man to come, to return, to come back to us, how are we to do that? Isaiah says, take those weapons and turn them into something that's going to help people. Serve other people with it. And to me, what Jesus is saying to us today is if Christ were to come right now, if, if it was to happen in this very moment, how would you act? If Jesus were to come and this was it, the Son of Man returns, how would you act in this moment? 
preparing is acting that way right now anyway. If Jesus was to return at this very moment right now, how would you serve others? Preparing is serving others that way right now anyway. If Jesus was to return right now in this space, how would you love? Think about the people that you would share that love with. Preparing is sharing that love with them right now, today, anyway, as if Christ is coming. If we want people to come to learn about God, we better act like we know this God. And we do so by preparing ourselves each and every day as if today is the day. The Son of Man is coming back. I will act, I will serve, and I will love as if Christ is coming. And I want you to know it. So I'm going to serve you. I'm going to love you as God has loved me. Because God is with us. Let's show that in everything that we do. Amen.